So there's a few helpful commands if you are planning to add more detail to the 3D model. So let's say, for example, you're working in this um, garden loop area and you want to add some intermediary paths in between some of your elements. Um, so one helpful command is if you are looking to get some polylines to begin working, you can always use the command dup border, which is duplicate border. And that is going to give you a closed polyline of whatever shape you have selected. Um, so be aware that this works best on surfaces. If you select a poly surface, it's gonna give you all the borders from the poly surface. Um, so you'll just end up with more lines than you need. But this gives you a, a curve and it will always be on whatever layer you're on. So just make sure that um, if you're wanting to add something that you're on the correct material layer. So now if I wanted to, for example, create a curb um, or some kind of a boundary around this site, I could use offset. And then um, I know we're in feet and inches, so I'm just gonna use six inches as my distance. And um, I could uh, use that as an extru extrusion or split the surface and extrude it to create like a concrete or um, other type of curb around that area. So um, if you wanted to draw additional paths in plan, then you can just go into your plan view and make sure that your project is uh, highlighted here and that will make it so that when you're drawing your lines will all stay on the same plane. So um, let's say for example I wanted to draw some additional curves within this space. I could begin drawing my control point curves across the site um, and I'm just going to hide that so that I can actually see my, my curves um, and offset it to let's say a width of um, three feet for uh, an intermediary path. And I could keep on drawing um, my, my desired paths all across the, the site. Of course, if you want to uh, make sure that all of these are going to be able to split the surface into different materials, then you have to make sure that you extend the ends where necessary so that you have um, line work that crosses the entire path. Otherwise, your surfaces won't split. So I can use the EX command, which is extend if you have your Rhino aliases selected. I'm just going to select that edge point um, as my target boundary, press enter, and then I can go through and use all of um, take all of my curve points that aren't reaching the end and just bring them off to the where they need to be. So I'll bring back my hidden surface and then I will, um, let me see, I'm just going to change this to x-ray so that I can seal my curves. Um, so if we go back to our perspective view and look at what we've drawn, our curves are actually, should be on the surface, but um, if they're not, you can select all your curves and use the set point command to set them to the right location. So set PT like this, uncheck X and Y because we're just working in the Z axis, which is the up and down axis and click OK. And then just click a point on the edge of your surface. I'm gonna turn off the project so that I can actually make sure I'm grabbing that edge. And you see it just brings all of those lines up to the correct height. So now they're all sitting on the surface and I'm gonna group them. And now if I wanna split this surface, I can go SP for split, select my group, click enter and um, I can just deselect these areas that are not paths and join all of these, use merge coplanar faces, and now I have a connected network of paths here. And I can put those on a different layer. Let's say I want to put them on the asphalt path layer. Hopefully not asphalt, um, hopefully something nicer than that, but that's an example of how you could begin to detail out more uh, paths within this model. Now I'm just gonna go back a few steps and show you another way to flatten your curves. Um, so let's say you have your curves, I'm just gonna group them and you have your surface below. You can also use the project curves to or control points to surface. So I'm going to um, use this command, just click on it. It says select curves and points to project. I'll select my grouped lines that I have, press enter, and then it says select surfaces, poly surfaces, et cetera, to 
project onto, I'll select the desired surface, press enter, and now you see it projects that line work up onto the surface. So you end up with two copies of your lines. The one that is highlighted is the one that is actually on the surface. So again, I'm gonna group that and then get rid of the uh, input elements. So um, then you can just go ahead and do your split if that's what you're trying to do. Maybe you want to um, put in some lighting elements and you want to have specific places to place them along the side of your uh, path. If you wanted to do that, I would suggest that first you select a starting point and an ending point. So I'm just gonna draw a line from a starting point on the path here. And uh, let's say that probably in our view, it only goes back to about um, there. This is the view that I'm gonna be working with. So I don't really need the, the um, light posts to go beyond what I'm gonna be seeing in my view. Now I can select this path surface and use the border again to grab the polyline on this edge. So you can have the curb curve and I'm going to use um, the split, actually I'm gonna use the trim command. So I'm, I'm gonna deselect that and I'm going to select this top line and this bottom line that we used as the start and finish and use the trim command. Now I can select the object to trim. I'm gonna select the curve, um, press enter. And now we should just have a curve here. Okay, so this didn't work. Let me just trim it again. And now we have just a component curve that's in between those start and finishing endpoints. I can use offset to um, bring that maybe let's say two feet off the path into the planting. And then I can use the divide command div and I'm gonna use the length and split this into 60 foot pieces so that uh, my light posts, I know where to set them on this line. Now I have points and if I wanna use an imported model to place lighting elements on that point, then I can use these as my guide. So I'm not just eyeballing according to what I think looks good, I can actually be a little bit more accurate in where I place my objects.